Greetings to everyone here today celebrating uh, MPP Mitzi Hunter's New Year celebration again. So I want to give thanks uh, for being here amongst you and acknowledge that we are on the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, also the home of Haudenosaunee here in Wendat and all nations that exist uh, in this territory. Uh, today I come to you to offer a land acknowledgement, acknowledging the land and everything that is within it, and giving thanks for all that the land provides for us. I also want to uh, share with you that it is a very difficult time for everyone, so we're very happy you are attending. And uh, I ask the Creator and all those ancestors to watch over each and every one of us, to help us as we live to be the best human being we can be, to walk with each other along our journeys, and to share love and kindness and respect with each other, knowing that we all matter, all life is, is sacred, all life has purpose. And so I'm very grateful that I can share these words with you here today and say that it is so important that we sit in conversation with each other, that we gather together in the formats that we can do nowadays. And so far now it's all virtually and that's okay. But it's good that we can talk with each other, we can share our visions, our goals, our dreams, our desires of what we want Scarborough to look like, how we see the world in our eyes, to be able to interpret that to those who have the ability to make changes and bring things into being. And so I'm very grateful that we can gather this way. And I know that you, you too are bringing your thoughts, your intentions, your good words to this gathering and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for joining again, and thank you for being here. Migwitch, hi, hi, thank you. Hello, Scarborough Guildwood, and Happy New Year. Thank you to all those joining us live over Facebook and YouTube, and to those watching the replay of my ninth annual New Year's Levy. We would normally be gathered in person at the Boys and Girls Club. But this year, it's not normal. We're far from normal. As I speak to you from my office inside Queen's Park, we are still in the grips of a global pandemic, which has interrupted all of our lives, especially the elderly in long-term care, children and youth in schools, and their parents. COVID has also disrupted essential workers and those on the front line of healthcare. They bravely face the virus each day, even while exhausted and close to burnout. I see you. Thank you. The duty of all of us who can is to get vaccinated. This is the best tool that we must use to fight the virus and not risk getting severely ill or overburdening our health system. I am so delighted that we as a community can get together for this levy. And we have an extra special guest, Randall Ajay, Ontario's first poet laureate and someone that I've known in Scarborough for years. You know, I am thrilled that you have the opportunity to meet him today. Today's levy is about bringing Scarborough Guildwood together to provide hope for the new year, looking back at 2021 as we realize the vision of a thriving Scarborough in 2022 and beyond. I would like to recognize and to thank all the healthcare and essential workers who have worked so hard to keep us safe and our economy moving. In these difficult times, you show us all what it means to be a Canadian and an Ontarian. I would also like to thank all the teachers, education workers, at the TDSB, the Toronto Catholic District School Board, our two French school boards staff who will return to the classroom in the face of much uncertainty. 
you continue to prioritize the education and the well-being of our students. They are our future. Merci beaucoup pour vos efforts pour bâtir des communautés fortes pour tout le monde. Most of all, thank you to everyone in our community for doing your part to help us fight COVID. The past two years have been tough. We've missed birthdays, holiday gatherings, time with family and friends, and sadly, some have lost loved ones, and many of us have sacrificed a lot, but we continue to wear our masks, to follow all public health guidelines, and highlight of 2021 was that the majority of us rolled up our sleeves to receive our COVID-19 vaccines, not once, but twice, and some of us even three times, because we know vaccines save lives and protect us from the severity of this illness. It also reduces the burden on our hospitals and our healthcare systems. Scarborough is strong and is a place that we love. As we step forward in 2022, I see a vision for a future of a more thriving place where everyone shares in the growth and opportunities for a prosperous future for our community. This past year was challenging for us in other ways beyond COVID. We saw a spike in gun violence. It is a serious issue we must solve. I have tabled a private member's bill, Bill 60, the Safe and Healthy Communities Act in Ontario's legislature that would make gun violence a public health issue, just like the comprehensive public health response that we have seen for the pandemic. This would channel much needed resources into proactive programs to end the cycles of violence that we see. This includes trauma-informed counseling and other resources available through OHIP. Using a public health approach will help people impacted and our communities to heal. This is my ninth year in office. I'm honored to serve my community, the people of Scarborough Guildwood. Throughout my time in elected office, I have not hesitated to be your strong, clear voice on what is important to you. I have stood in this legislature and called for funding to build a new hospital in Scarborough. I support the building of better transit so people can get moving more easily and reliably without waiting for the next bus. I am pleased to see that work is underway for the subway extension and that plans are taking shape for the LRT along Eglinton, Kingston Road, and Morningside Avenues. With the planned bus rapid transit along Ellesmere Road, soon Scarborough will be more fully connected and people will be able to move more easily and safely. I grew up in this community and I know how important it is to make these investments. This is a once in a three generation opportunity to transform our community. We want to do it in a way that benefits everyone, especially our residents, businesses, institutions, and agencies. Small businesses are the backbone of our community and we must ensure that they remain and thrive coming out 
of the pandemic. Many have been hanging on for the past two years through the various lockdowns. And I know it has been challenging. They will need our support to make it through so that they can continue to provide the many jobs for residents in our community. Let's all shop local and keep those businesses going. I had a chance to tour many of our wonderful stores and local companies. I was so impressed by the wide variety of cuisine from every part of the world right here in Scarborough. In Toronto and around the globe, the cost of living has gone up for everyone. Food bank use has gone up by 43% and housing costs have increased by 25%. Right here in Scarborough, many of our neighbors are struggling to keep a roof over their heads and put food on the table. Families and people need more support, especially in these challenging times. One big cost for many families is the cost of childcare. I spent time working with the Boys and Girls Club, the Toronto District School Board, and parents to find solutions. Yet, we need more. Families need greater access to childcare, including before and after school. And this is why I strongly urge Ontario's Premier to accept the federal childcare agreement so Scarborough families can have access to $10 a day childcare. Children are our future and they must also be our priority. Above all, for a thriving Scarborough, we have a lot of work to do. We must take tangible action that address systemic racism and support the fight against inequality and racial bias in all its forms. And that is why I introduced a motion to combat Islamophobia and hate of all kinds. This past year, we've seen the rise of anti-Asian hate, which we must work to eliminate. We also know where I stand against anti-Black racism. I remain hopeful that our society will overcome these issues. Our diverse and beautiful community of Scarborough Guildwood is nested atop the beautiful and majestic Scarborough Bluffs on the shores of Lake Ontario. We are surrounded by forests and wetlands. It is our duty to steward and protect these waters and lands and species who rely on it. We need proactive policies that protect rather than erode our precious air, watershed, conservation areas, parks, species, and shorelines. We need concrete action to the global challenge of our lifetime and address the climate emergency now. For Scarborough to thrive, we must all work together to build a safe, vibrant, and growing community. Happy New Year. J'espère que vous avez une bonne année. I wish you a wonderful and fulfilling 2022, full of laughter, love, health, and safety for you and your family. Imagine a place where we control our destiny. Be who we want to be. Shape the future of technology. Address world hunger. 
and racial injustice. Rejuvenate our communities, our economy. Achieve gender equality. Combat global catastrophic risk. Actualize truth and reconciliation. A place to always seize opportunities. Where we can let our creativity soar. We can. We are. Here to be the force of the future. Our brilliance will not be dimmed. This coming year is your year. Your year to thrive and to flourish. Happy New Year to each and every one of you and your loved ones. I'm John Mason. On behalf of Friends of Guild Park, our hope is for lots more residents of Scarborough Guildwood to visit Guild Park and thrive by enjoying the wonderful art and nature here on the site. Hello, I'm Superintendent Dave Ritzick from 43 Division of the Toronto Police Service. And as we begin 2022, my wish for a thriving Scarborough is for all residents not to forget the strong sense of community that Scarborough has always been known for. I was born and raised here, and I know firsthand that Scarborough has always been a place where we support our youth, our seniors, our neighbours, and our businesses. As we work through these unprecedented times of the pandemic, don't forget that we all play a role in our community's safety and well-being. Looking after each other during these tough times is the best way to ensure a healthy and prosperous new year for all Scarborians. Thank you. Progress Career Planning Institute, a nonprofit organization in Scarborough. Hopes for 2022. Progress in Scarborough through innovation. Respect and value the diversity and unique strengths of individuals. Businesses are growing and communities are flourishing. We all wish you a happy 2022. Hi, my name is Saharva Mezyari, and I am the new director of the East Scarborough Storefront. What is our hope for a thriving Scarborough in 2022? What it's always been. For connected people, for abundant resources, and for seeing our community as a collective that thrives on collaboration and partnership. Where we see Toronto's employment and training programs, which is MPP Mitzi Hunter, her team, and our community partners, a great year ahead. In 2022, we remain committed to supporting the lives of women, girls, and gender diverse people in our community. We will continue to champion and support our participants by providing opportunities for success in the workforce and in life. Together, we will help maintain a thriving, resilient, and engaged community that supports the diverse needs of those in Scarborough. Happy 2022 here at uh, Pathways Scarborough Village. We're hoping that the community stays connected in order to thrive. Well, hello. Hello, hello. It's wonderful to be here with you. Not, no other place I'd rather be than sitting here in the seat of power in Ontario with Ontario's first Poet Laureate, Randall Ajay. Thank you for having me here today and thank you for all you've done. You know, um, I'm, I'm really excited to, to chat with you today. You know, Randall, I feel as if I've known you longer than I've known you yeah. because you have just been this incredible presence for Scarborough. I feel as if you're you're sort of a force. Mm. And so having this opportunity to talk to you and for the people in my constituency in Scarborough Guildwood in particular mm -hmm. to get to know you is a true honor. So thank you for taking this time. Mm -hmm. My first yeah. question to you is, you know, we're now in 2022 and what is your hope for 2022? My hope for 2022 really is to do more with less. And I think that's what a lot of people that come from Scarborough have learned to do. We've learned how to make the most out of the little that we get, being seen as kind of the underdogs in a sense. And I think that's what's really driven me. Growing up in Scarborough, as you know, yeah. you're kind of the underdog, you're forgotten, you're kind of casted to the side in a sense. And, and what I'm really hoping to do is to make more, splash, you know, more, more splashes, but do less in a way. And I guess the other thing is really around alchemy. You know, I think about alchemy a lot because 
Uh, traditionally, alchemy is how we take uh, a rock and turn it into gold. But I think of it as how do we take rocky situations and turn them into golden opportunities. Another thing that I think a lot of Scar... I don't like to use the term Scarbarians, but folks from Scarborough have learned to do. So that's what my hope is for 2022 and to just spread the message of positivity. Turning rocks into gold. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, talking about the alchemy reminds me of Mark Stoddart. Mm -hmm. And I know you know him very well. Um, there's so much creativity in Scarborough. Um, I think it's overflowing when I, I think of our community. And, you know, when Ontario needed a poet laureate, um, to me, you were, you were natural. But mm -hmm. what brought you... Uh, to this role mm -hmm. as the first Poet Laureate of Ontario? There's so much to say. And I think one thing I've recognized, you mentioned Mark Stoddard, and I think about us in Scarborough, we look out for each other. You know, we really do look out for each other, even though it's not publicized in that way. Mm -hmm. But I look at the mentors who supported me in terms of getting here, um, just kind of creating the, the platform, the opportunities, like yourself, you know? <laughs> and I, I really want to take an opportunity to just say thank you because you saw something in me that I don't know if I quite saw in myself at the time. And just the call, I'll never forget the call, the call that you made just to say, hey, Randell, have you heard about this? And I was kind of lackadaisical, like, yeah, you know, I'm not quite sure, but I think it was your words of, no, you have to. I think you, you had the foresight already to see it happening before I even knew it was possible, you know? So uh, to get here as a Poet Laureate is individuals like yourself who continue to look out for um, their own as far as people that live in Scarborough, Scarberians, and also just seeing something in me that I don't think I, I did at the time, but also just planting seeds. You know, as you know, you, we plant seeds over the years through the work that we do, and eventually they bloom. And this is one of those things that bloomed in. So thank you. I appreciate you. You know, you talk about getting the call, and one of my mentors is uh, Dr. Jean Augustine. Mm. And, uh, and she told me that um, very early in my career, uh, that when you get the call to be ready. Mm. And, you know, when I called you, I knew you were ready. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's really important for, for young people to know that they are ready. Yeah. And that they should work on perfecting their craft, perfecting mm -hmm. whatever it is they're passionate about. So, so what advice would you have for a young person in Scarborough that's looking at you right now and wanting to step into their dream. You know, it's, it's so beautiful because I think of the Honorable Jean Augustine and what she's imparted in you mm -hmm. and how you've kind of imparted into myself and carry on the torch. I think that's it. It's how do you leave a legacy behind enough that someone else can walk a path that's a little bit smoother. And that's basically what we're seeing here, you know? Mm -hmm. And you, the two of us are kind of in the middle um, and what I'd say to young people is you, you want to think about your why. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's so easy to forget what your why is. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to walk day to day and just, just live a, a mundane life, mm -hmm. especially given the circumstances we're living in right now. It's a very mm -hmm. difficult, tumultuous time to be a young person because nothing, nothing is consistent. One thing I realized about this pandemic is that uncertainty is the only thing that we're actually promised. And... Through this pandemic, uncertainty is something that is uncomfort more uncomfortable than it ever has been. But I, I think I'd share with the young people to be uncomfortable with uncertainty, to know what your why is, mm -hmm. and leave a legacy. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's difficult. I can't think of my legacy when I'm 17, 18, or even 14 mm -hmm. years old. But you really want to think about the fact that one day we're not going to be here. And it's what you do here that is going to show what you've left behind, but also how you're remembered in a sense. And mm -hmm. I... and and I guess yeah, you really want to know what your why is. Yeah. I also believe, though, when you're 14, you may not know what your legacy is, but you know what your purpose is mm. and because it's mm. inside of you. Yes. And yeah. it's sort of urging you on and you yeah. think about it and you may be a little bit shy about sharing it. Mm -hmm. and, and I wondered about... For you, you know, taking this, this creative path, mm -hmm. what allowed you to pursue that purpose? You know, Mitzi, uh, I'm really inspired by people that uh, say that I can't do something. Mm -hmm. And for many times over my life, I've heard a lot of no's. Mm -hmm. And I've heard a lot of, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. You're, it's not possible for you. So that inspires me because 
I can't, I have to prove those people wrong. Yeah. I can't prove them right because they're going to continue harming and hurting other young people. So I think I just wanted to be different in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but also there's something about just understanding that this purpose that you mentioned, mm -hmm. it's, it's inside of you. And I think there's something about it being buried inside of you that it's not anywhere for you to go find and search and look for it. It's just about you almost excavating it, you know, excavating the buried treasure that's inside of us. And I think that's where the purpose really lies. So uh, my path was really finding out what my purpose was, but it was mixing purpose with service. I love to serve. And I think we talked about it a little earlier. As a Virgo, you know, yeah. we're here to serve. That's what we do. We want to help. We want to make the world a little bit better. Even if we can just see something just a little bit better in terms of progress. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really why I, I do what I do. Um, I just want to leave this earth knowing that I, I did something. Even if they don't remember my name, I just want to know that I, I did something because so many people imparted their wisdom and knowledge into me. So Randell, tell me how you maintain that creative edge. What do you do to replenish? Well, in your writing specifically, there's a lot of beautiful parks uh, that I love and these parks are opportunities for me to kind of disappear and just get reconnected. I think nature has this really amazing ability to show us what creativity can be mm -hmm. and what creativity is. And I think creativity is very simple, but as an overthinker and as a, a bit of a recovering per uh, perfectionist, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there's something about understanding that creativity is much more simple than the overthinking mind does. But in addition is, uh, there's a book that I read uh, by Elizabeth Gilbert. She's also the author of Eat, Pray, Love. The book is called The Big Magic. And she talks about having a relationship with creativity. You know, there's mm -hmm. something about relating to creativity in, in a way of being and not trying to force things. And that's what nature really teaches me. It teach me just, just to let things be. But I also maintain my creativity by being an observer of life. I try not to be so consumed and, and living in this personhood. I try to be an observer just see Randell in certain circumstances and understanding that creativity is, uh, it's happening in us all the time. So I'm just trying to simplify my, my approach to my creative process. So you access it, you yeah. know it's there. Always. You know, you mentioned earlier about COVID and, and there are a lot of ups and downs for people. Um, and you know, we're not doing a lot of the things that we would normally do uh, to keep our connections. And uh, I'm wondering about that mental health and well-being mm -hmm. and how, how you protect that and, and how do you, um, you know, really stay, stay mentally healthy and have well-being? It's difficult. You know, it's really difficult because I do think about a lot of individuals who are suffering and going through, you know, some really difficult times right now. Mm -hmm. um, and have been. So I think about, uh, I think about have my morning routine, just having a routine in the morning where mm -hmm. I read, I just do things that kind of pour into me before I, kinda, I go into the day. I think as a servant, you know, we mm -hmm. often pour a lot into others and mm -hmm. it's how do I continue to pour water into myself. So my morning routine from meditation to drinking a, a cup of tea to reading uh, and just taking some time to just be with myself, listening to positive affirmations, that's what helps me. Mm -hmm. So I'd say for anyone, you know, what routine makes you feel good? We talk about self-care and self-care sometimes feels like this glitzy, glamoury thing, mm -hmm. but it's something as simple as what makes you feel joy? What makes you feel good? Mm -hmm. And so my mental health is really connected to my, uh, my routines in terms of my self-care and the people. I hang around with really positive people. If you're, if you're not very positive, I have a way of kind of like averting, you know, mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's, I surround myself with people who think like-minded and are, are really progressive. That's, that's, that's really good, that morning mm -hmm. routine. Yeah. You know, one of the things that Scarborough is known for is its cuisine. Mm -hmm. And it's a range <laughs> of cuisine. What is the best place for you to eat at in Scarborough? Let's, let's hear it. Let's let out that secret. It's a really tough question, <laughs> Can Mitzi. you choose one? Oh, that's really <laughs> tough. Uh, you know... I would say Mona's roti. I really love Mona's roti. One of my favorite. Wow. Yeah. Is, is that yours? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was just having a debate about the best roti place. And I think yeah. it's Mona's roti. Yeah, I think so too. I, I that's love, why there's always a lineup. Always, always, always. Uh, you could be standing, standing there for a little bit, but it's, it's good to see because even in the background, there's, 
there's some production happening. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I love Mona's. Mona's would probably be my number one. I, and I think it's going to just keep uh, blowing up because right at McCown and Shepherd, yeah. she's uh, located very close to that, Absolutely. is where the new subway is going yeah. to be eventually once it gets built. So Absolutely. it's a good spot. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I want to uh, just ask about the role as of the poet laureate of Ontario and you know how how has it changed you has it changed how you um perform your craft how you uh connect with people what's what's been happening there tell us the behind the scenes yeah uh so it's interesting because you represent a province and I, and I don't think I've ever had that I've never had I guess the role, you know, in terms of representing and, and advocating on behalf of a province. So it's interesting because I'm doing a lot of research as far as different parts of this province, wanting to get a better sense and better understanding of uh, how things work in our province as well too. So there's that, how do you appeal with your, with your creativity? How do you appeal to an audience when traditionally I wrote for Toronto, I wrote for Scarborough for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And I guess in addition to that, it's, it's the first. So you're build, I'm, I'm building out the structures as I go, building out the framework as I go, because I want to be able to leave a legacy that the next Poet Laureate can take on and can just run with it. Because it, it also wasn't easy taking on this role during a pandemic. And sometimes I feel like I want to do more, but there's, there's so many limitations in terms of what I can do. Mm -hmm. But the beautiful thing is it's changed my approach, mm -hmm. uh, my approach to my creativity, it's changed the way I see myself as well, because I, I've been planting seeds for years, you know, mm -hmm. for over a decade. And I always knew deep down there was something in me that could reach, you know, this type of opportunity. Mm -hmm. But being here, it's really reaffirming, even when I wasn't uh, being compensated for the work that I was doing, even when uh, the people that I loved didn't believe in me enough, even when I was dealing with my own mental health challenges mm -hmm. and thinking, could I, should I continue? Because mm -hmm. um, as a poet, a lot of people said, you can't, mm -hmm. you know, there's no money in poetry. Mm -hmm. But again, going back to purpose, when you have something in you, when you have a vision, it's not for anyone else to see, but your own, you know, it's my vision. So I saw it even before other people did. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, I think it's important that people will challenge your vision in a sense because it really reminds you of just how invested are you in what you see, are you in your purpose or what you believe about yourself. So uh, the role has been phenomenal. There's been some amazing opportunities to work in healthcare, uh, to work with, um, with law. Like there's so many different opportunities that have kind of come. And I've met some really beautiful, amazing people that work here at Queens Park. And I, I, I'm just grateful, grateful for representing uh, Scarborough, grateful for representing young people that look like me who uh, have a creative path but are told that that's not an opportunity. I just want to represent opportunity. I want to represent, I didn't grow up seeing someone like myself in this position. So I want to be able to, to, to create something that can at least show other young people what's, what's possible, you know? Um, yeah. Well, you're the first Poet Laureate for Ontario, so yeah. you're the mold. Yeah. And uh, I think that's really wonderful for young people growing up in Scarborough to say, I can be just like him. I often say to young people, if you can see me, you can be me. Mm. If you can see me, like you can be me. Like that's poetry. That's poetry. <laughs> now, Randell, just recently, I was listening to um, an ad, actually, for a campaign, and I heard this melodious voice come over the screen talking about Scarborough, mm -hmm. talking about what Scarborough deserves. And there was, you know, I, I was like, this sounds like a familiar voice. You know, you are becoming that voice of Scarborough. Tell me about the Scarborough Health Network's Love Scarborough campaign and why you believe that Scarborough deserves better and more. So the Love Scarborough campaign was something that was almost a no-brainer when Scarborough Health Network reached out to me. We represent 25% of the city of Toronto. Uh, we get 1% of the, the hospital funding and across the province that number is even, you know, just it's, it's jarring to think about. We have three hospitals in Scarborough. 
my mom's had two surgeries. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had nieces, nephews, godchildren that have been born in these hospitals, friends that have gone to these hospitals. So just to think, our hospitals are getting less just by way of geography. Mm -hmm. To think that our hospitals are receiving less just by way of location, like it was just really baffling to me because mm -hmm. these are people that I love that will end up having to go to these hospitals. So the campaign is really about raising $100, $100 million across these three three hospitals, which is still not a lot of money, to be honest with you. Um, but it, it was a great campaign to work on because it was about showing the love that Scarborough has for Scarborough and, and not necessarily talking about the the inequity, but really just sh sharing we deserve we deserve the same, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's just really exciting, really exciting to, to serve in that capacity. Yeah, we deserve at least the same and to help us catch up, maybe we deserve a little more. And so I'm really proud of that Love Scarborough campaign. It really uh, expresses the affection that those of us who grew up in this community have and um, in the difference that we want to see happen in our, in our community. So really appreciate you um, shining that spotlight on such an important cause for hospital and healthcare in Scarborough. Thank it's you. really, really great. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell me, you know, you've had an amazing journey, Randell. You know, when you think about that, you started Rise, you um, have done just did incredible work for yourself. You've now landed here in Queen's Park as Ontario's first poet laureate. What do you want your legacy to be? That's a really good question. There's, like anyone, a lot of adversity, you know, early on in life and throughout life that I've, I've really gone through. I, I want my legacy to be one of, um, transformation because my life hasn't been easy. I haven't always been this person, haven't always seen life this way. But the one thing I've learned in life is that adversity doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care about how much money you have in your pocket, where in the world you grow up, how much, uh, like the color of your skin, adversity doesn't, doesn't care. But what I'm hoping to do is I'm really hoping to share with people, despite the adversity, we all have the propensity to transform, mm -hmm. that we all have the opportunity to change and shift. That's why I'm not afraid to talk about my hardships. I'm not afraid to talk about my shortcomings, my missteps. I'm very public. I'm very open about mm -hmm. the, the challenges I've gone through because I want individuals to know just because you've been here or you've done this, it doesn't mean that you can't aspire for more. So transformation, that's really what I want my legacy to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, if people don't remember my name, it's okay. As long as they can remember the work that I've, I've, I've done and that I've left behind, that's all, that's all I, really, I really care about. Randall, who or what are you becoming? I'm becoming the nine-year-old that used to walk around in his, uh, his apartment and saw himself speaking to thousands of people, saw himself serving. Um, I'm becoming what that nine-year-old saw, that man. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited because at a young age, I, like you said, even at 14, but at nine, I saw something in myself that not many people did that were even my parents didn't quite see in me. And that's exciting. That's really exciting. So that nine-year-old vision is now your reality. Yeah. <laughs> that's Who would have thought? Pretty yeah. great. Yeah. Well, you did. I did. Yeah. You did. I certainly saw it. You did. <laughs> this has been so great having this conversation with you here in the halls of power and decision at Queen's Park. And um, very, very powerful for young people to see you and know that absolutely one day they too can be Ontario's Poet Laureate, Ontario's Premier, mm -hmm. Canada's Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's really important that the young people in Scarborough can see that that hard work that they put in, never giving up that persistence, will really pay off. My last question to you is, you know, any heroes that you've identified in Scarborough that uh, continue to motivate and inspire you? I mean, there's so many heroes and it's, it's really tough to whittle it down. Um, it's really tough to, to, to whittle it down. Um, 
not because we're having this interview, but I'd say, I think you're a hero. And I'd say you're a hero because when I, I remember my father used to go to those, those, those picnics that you do in your constituency in Kinson Galloway. And I think just seeing people in my community that were doing more, that were serving and giving back. So I'd say individuals like yourself, just because you're still here, you know, you're, you're, you're still here that the, the community loves you. They care about you. They see you. And I think, uh, as a black woman, especially, we don't see enough black women getting the love that they deserve, even despite the hard work and not just hard, but like the hard work, you know what I mean? And uh, I'd say you're definitely one of them. You mentioned Mark Stoddard. Uh, he's a hero for me. And I'm even getting emotional because it, it just reminds me to keep doing the same for the next generation, that there can be another Mitzi, another Randell, you know? Uh, but I'd say Mark Stoddard as well. And Mark, because he just from day one he just believed in me and he just hasn't quit on me no matter what you know i can call him at any time beck can call he'll be there and uh mark is definitely one of those people and i'd say Dwayne morgan as well because he paved the path to know that this was even possible you know and i have to continue honoring those giants because without them i wouldn't have known that this was an uh, even a possibility to be an entrepreneur to be a poet and, and keep doing uh but the the biggest hero would be my mom like my mom is my biggest hero uh yeah, that woman has sacrificed 15 years of working in, uh, in a factory graveyard shifts to raise me. And uh, I guess she continued because maybe in her spirit, she saw this in me deep down too. So yeah, um, yeah, Aww. tough one. You actually got me. <laughs> yeah, You actually got me, yeah. Randall mm -hmm. Ajay, you are someone to me that all of Ontario needs to hear about. And I am so honored that you took the time to talk to my community of Scarborough Guildwood mm -hmm. and to share your story today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm CEO of Your Toronto Zoo, wishing you a happy new year. 2022, off to a bit of bumpy start, but we're looking forward to conquering COVID, hosting you back at your zoo real soon, and wishing you all our best as we fight this pandemic. Take care. Hi guys, Dero here, Dwayne DeRosario, and for 2022 Thriving Scarborough, what I would like to see is business supporting businesses and community supporting each other's businesses. Let's make 2022 a successful year for us all, and let's make it a very peaceful and joyful year. In 2022, BGC East Scarborough and Ma'at Youth Innovation and Cultural Centre hopes that every community in Scarborough continues to work towards achieving their fullest potential. Through equitable educational opportunities. And by promoting its culture, music and arts. Scarborough has done so much for Toronto and we firmly believe that together we can make a difference. Hi, my name is Christina. I'm the Operations Coordinator at 5 and 2. And on behalf of our wonderful team, we just wanted to wish you a very, very happy new year. And our hope for a thriving Scarborough in 2022 is that we would continue to feed those that are in need and continue to love on our neighbours. And we just can't wait to see what 2022 has in store for us. Hello Scarborough, I'm Ida Conte Pitcher from Toronto Public Library. I often think of the stunning art installation at Cedarbury Library called Scarborough Made Resilience. That's what we're all about in Scarborough, resilience in the face of challenges. Living and working in Scarborough fills me with pride. We come together as a community and we see so much kindness in these tough times. I know we will continue to shine this year and we're excited to be part of it at Toronto Public Library. Greetings, I'm Eric Hong representing Momiji Healthcare Society. Along with everybody else, we are concerned about the still ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. We are thankful that the seniors in our care have fared as well as may have been hoped for so far. 
despite the obvious challenges, we look forward to 2022 as when we will have the COVID pandemic beat with a sense of hopefulness. We are also optimistic that Scarborough will pull together and come out better as a community. Thank you and Happy New Year. Hi, I'm John McKay, the Member of Parliament for Scarborough Guildwood. I'm grateful to have Mitzi as my provincial colleague and for her organizing this event. We've worked closely for years and I look forward to further collaboration in 2022. This pandemic has taught us that everyone has an important role to play from healthcare workers, volunteers, our friends and neighbors, and to the employees at our local grocery store. In 2022, I know our community will stay strong and resilient despite challenging times. Happy New Year.